Uh, this morning we're going to do a little turning project in which we're going to turn uh, on the table lamp, uh, which is a, a project uh, that I did for fine woodworking uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, I've now turned, uh, I think, like four of these lamps, uh, and this is the second one I've done for a club. Uh, they're kind of a fun project, and you'll be able to see some spindle turning. Most ways uh, aren't long enough to uh, turn the entire lamp in one section. Uh, vibration is uh, uh, directly proportional to stiffness and inversely proportional to mass. So cast iron has traditionally been a good uh, material to build a lathe out of in that uh, we get a lot of mass and the stiffness of this material is it, 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 right, it's not real stiff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, and we'll talk about, might as well talk about this now with band saws. Uh, uh, recently, we've seen a number of lathes that are made out of structural steel and are sort of welded together. And traditional machine design said that that was sort of a bad practice uh, and not desirable because, of course, steel is very stiff. And it, has a mass that's probably better than cast iron, but so it has a mass, but it doesn't. It's too stiff, and it tends to transmit vibration. However, uh, it's been found that a correctly designed weldment can actually yield a pretty good machine. Uh, the welds actually will uh, arrest the vibration in that section, and uh, the welds act like a crack in a glass. You know that you can't make a crack in glass because the crack sort of cancels out yeah. by the most furniture turners probably don't need more than about 10 inches in diameter. Uh, and again, uh, that's a bit of a fooler in that if you take the advertised swing against the real swing, the real swing is the distance over the tool rest because mm -hmm. you've got to get the tool rest under the spindle. So uh, we've just ameliorated the swing of this lathe by what the, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half is the type height of this tool base. And that's times two on the swing. We're going to start with uh, turning the, the base for this lamp. Um, and uh, Bob has done a nice job of, of, of gluing up some mahogany. So what we'll do first is find the centers. And I often in my own shop use a metal worker center finder, which is like a, a thing that's at a 45 degree angle you can put on the ruler. Um, and if you have a perfect square, it works fine. If you don't, it's not worth the powder to blow it to hell. Many times with wood, you're almost better just to very carefully draw the diagonals and you'll come out in the right place. And there is the very center. This is called a step center. And uh, I like them uh, a lot. Uh, a good rule of thumb is the rest should be about two thirds the height of the material if you were uh, doing an orthographic projection. Alright, I'm just about round now. Yeah. diameter here uh, to be uh, two and an eighth inch right at the very series of cuts in here. Pushing straight in. Now the rest 
of this work is with a spindle gouge. And we're going to come to that circle right there. that this is completely repairable. I just put an undercut in that base. When this comes down on the other, that'll come down absolutely flush. How are you coming into that? Pardon? How are you coming into that? I set it there like that and just tip it down like that. Once I find that angle, I can just stick with it. Just sort of reduce this down to that diameter. And now we'll set our dividers to 3 8 for the size of the bead there. And that bead's a little above the bottom like that. We'll rough in our bead. Now we'll cut our bead. That's two and an eighth up here too. And that's where we're gonna conceal our uh, joint, so we're going to bring this down to two and an eighth inches in diameter. The roughing out gouge, folks, is that if you don't want to use a skew, you can turn this baby and just run it along like that, and you'll get a finish almost as good as a skew. And now we'll turn a nice, big, healthy bead there. Got to end up dead sideways there. Might as well just knock that material out of there while I'm at it. I don't hurry the tool, I give it time to cut. That's the idea of feed and speed. See how we're putting the taper on that shaft?
Your job is to hold that for a while. All right. You know, anybody can make it right. It's to make it right after you've made it wrong. That's the real <laughs> I got it done before it can loosen up. Everybody watch, I'm, I'm, I'm just melding this shellac right into this, this point. This is this is what you would call garnet. It's the darkest of all shellacs. Wouldn't want to use anything else. just spin that until it starts to cut sweetly and once it's cutting you can do it with one hand
In England, this would be called polishing. Okay. And we got the wax cup. We got to drill the wax cup now. This is faith plate turning. Brain's running this way now. <laughs> 